Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Um, in this video, we are going to be painting this turtle, and I hope you have fun. Let's get started. So I'm starting with a standard kind of blank canvas. You can use any size or shape. And for our paints, we are going to be using a white, a bright red, a lemon yellow, um, a lighter cobalt blue, and a dark ultramarine blue, as well as black. So once you have those colors, we also want to be using a large square brush, a nice little round brush, and either a medium bright or filbert brush. Either works. So we have a nice variety of brushes. I also have a little piece of chalk over here just for sketching, and you can use a pencil as well. Either works. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. So um, now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna be using my nice large flat brush, and we are gonna go ahead and paint in our background. And for our background, we are going to be using a mixture of white and cobalt blue. So I'm just gonna take a nice scoop of white, a nice scoop of cobalt blue, and we'll also be alternating between the colors, but this is a fairly good base. So once you kind of have like a kind of sky blue mixture, then what we're going to do is we are gonna go ahead and fill in the vast majority of our background. And the trick is you wanna start in that upper right hand corner and it just kind of fans out. So I'm gonna kind of do a couple brush strokes here just to kind of show you the directions that we're going. And as I kind of work upwards and downwards, it's kind of, kind of line up with the edges of the canvas. So you really want it to fan out from that corner. And occasionally I'm gonna be swapping between my cobalt and my white. It doesn't have to be one solid coat. We actually want a kind of like a streaky look to it. And if you have a hard time filling in those little holes on your canvas, you know, make sure you're using enough paint or make sure you use a little bit of water with your paint just to kind of help it glide across your canvas and get it all filled in. And it doesn't necessarily matter that, you know, you're filling in more of the corner first and you're slowly working out. As long as those strokes are kind of following that general direction and pointing towards that corner. But we really want to go for like a nice streaky fun effect. And I'm kind of using my entire arm as I do these strokes and I'm kind of coming back in, adding some more streaks. If a streak is a little too harsh, I just kind of brush it out a little bit more and let it blend in. If your paint is already started to dry, it's gonna have a harder time blending in. So it's very important that you keep moving quickly while it's still wet. Um, that way you can blend in any things that you need to fix. So now I'm going to make a turquoise color. So I'm using my cobalt blue with a little bit of yellow. And if it's too green, that means you have a lot more yellow than blue. So we're going for more of a blue side. So make sure you continue adding some of that cobalt. And once you have that mixture and you get nice turquoise, you're going to be streaking and following the same directions of your strokes from earlier. So they're still fanning out from that corner but I'm just streaking in this turquoise. So I'm using that nice sharp edge of my brush and letting it kind of like point towards the corner. And that's how I get more defined streaks. And then if I want to blend something in, I use the fat side of the brush to do that. But just nice back and forth, get it to where you would like it. And I do want some defined streaks, so I don't want to blend them all in, but if there's ever one that I'm just not too fond of, 
that's when I usually blend it in. And I can go back in with either white to help soften it or even some of my cobalt and white mixture. So I'm just kind of coming back in, adjusting my streaks, getting it to a happy place where I'm happy with it. And if you run out of paint, you can always mix a little bit more, but usually the colors won't necessarily be exactly the same each time. They're going to be a little bit different each time you have to remix them. So it's good that you mix enough, but not too much to be a waste. So now that I have some of those streaks in there, I'm just going ahead and give my brush a really good rinse out. And we gotta let this dry. And the best way to let your paintings dry is to stop putting paint on them. <laughs> so this is a really good time. You can get up, walk around, stretch your legs. Make sure you get uh, your chalk or your pencil ready to go. Because when we come back, that's when we're going to draw in that turtle. And you'll know it's going to be dry because it won't be quite as shiny as it was when it was wet. So you can kind of pick it up, move it around. You can also fan it. Hair dryers also help your paintings to dry as well. And I have some of my stuff here a little bit more sped up. So if you're not dry by the time that... I finish it in the video, don't worry, just go ahead, give it a pause, and you'll be ready for the next step when you are ready. And when you kind of feel like it's probably dry and it's looking dry, you can kind of lightly touch it, but if there's an area that's definitely not dry, don't touch it. It's usually bad. All right, looks like we're getting there. So now that my background is dry, I'm going to sketch in my turtle. And I'm gonna start first with the shell of the turtle, which is kind of like a sideways egg because we want the pointy end to kind of point at that lower left-hand corner. And an egg shape is kind of like a teardrop shape. So it's rounded at one end and kind of slightly pointed at the other. But we're not going full point. It's still going to kind of slightly be rounded at the smaller end too. And once I have that in there, I'm going to create the head of the turtle, which is a similar shape, just in the other direction. And it's much smaller. So I'm just kind of slightly curving it. Almost kind of like a strawberry. For the fins... I like to kind of draw like the one of the edges, like the upper edge of the fin, just so I know what direction it's going to be in. And it kind of curves down. We want it to kind of fit inside the canvas. So I got the curves. And then to make them look more like fins versus little stick arms is we're going to follow the back and kind of take a U-turn and come back to the body. And you can always adjust these and, you know, tweak them before you paint them in. And even if you're drawing it out with pencil, um, some of the pencil lines can be covered. But just make sure you're drawing lightly. That way, if you do make a mistake, you can still erase it and tweak it. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using my large flat brush. And we are going to kind of prime the shell. So I'm just going to take white paint and we're going to block in that shell shape. That way it makes it easier for us to add colors later. And I'm kind of keeping the layer kind of small or not small, but kind of thin. That way it can dry quickly. So when we get ready to put on the color, it'll be ready to go. But we're just kind of blocking in the shell. Just getting it all filled in with just white. And it's okay if you have a little blue peek through. It's not the end of the world.
So once you have a nice even coat, then what we're going to do is we're going to swap from our shell and start filling in our fins and our head. So I rinsed out my brush and I'm going to be using my medium brush, so that filbert or bright, or the medium one, whichever works. Um, and we are going to mix like a bright, vibrant green. So the trick to getting this green is you want to use a lot of yellow and a little bit of blue. Or if you want like a different shade or color to your turtle, you can do whatever you prefer. But I'm doing a nice bright green. So lots of yellow, a little bit of blue, and then I think I'm going to add just a touch of white just to help it kind of pop off that blue background a little bit. So just a little bit of white added to it. I'm going to get this nice, fun, bright green. And I'm just going to go ahead and take this color and I'm going to color in and fill in those appendages. And I'm trying to do nice, kind of smooth coats. I don't want it bubbling up in any areas. That way it dries fairly quickly. It's kind of coloring book style and you're just going to fill it in. This top one over here. And then don't forget his head. Nice even color. And the cool thing is, is if it does pick up a little bit of blue as you fill it in, it just kind of adds to that green color. So now I'm just giving my brush a really good rinse off. And we're going to go in and we're going to create the floor of our ocean. So I'm mixing yellow and red to make a nice orange. And with that, I'm going to come right along the bottom of the canvas and I'm just going to kind of make it lumpy and bumpy. And you want to make sure you have enough paint. That way you can make your way all the way across. And once you kind of have that line of the bottom, then you're just going to fill it in. So it's solid orange. And the cool thing is, is orange is opposite to blue. So when you fill it in, it's going to kind of get like this uh, kind of brownish look with the orange. It'll still be nice and vibrant, but it'll kind of look a little bit more earthy because you have the opposite colors right on top of each other. So I'm giving my brush a really good rinse out. And our next step here, so we're going to take a little bit of white and some yellow, and we're going to highlight our like little arms and head. So I'm just taking that yellow and white mixture and I'm just adding a nice swoosh along the top part of the head and the legs and arms. And you can kind of blend them in if you need to. But just a little accent just to kind of help pop them up off that blue background. All right, so I have these nice and blended in. Give my brush a nice rinse off. And I'm still going to be using my medium brush and we are going to mix kind of a nice deep turquoise. So if you remember, it's mainly blue with a bit of yellow. And I'm just going to add a smidge of dark blue to it. That way it's just a little bit richer. And I still want like a nice deep turquoise and I'm kind of wiping out my brush so I don't have too much and that way I get a nice sharp edge and I'm going to let that sharp edge kind of lead and we're going to create some seaweed and I'm just kind of wiggling it down to the bottom and they're kind of wiggling to the same point because that's where it's growing. Just nice little wiggle. If you encounter your arm, you kind of want to just skip it so it looks like it's behind the arm. But I'm just adding some nice little wiggly strands and you want to make sure you're kind of planting them in your sediment <laughs> or the ground of your ocean. All 
I'm going to do another one on the other side. Just nice wiggly seaweed. And every time I kind of reach his leg, I just skip it and pop over to the other side to continue that piece. And then I'm going to go back in with a little bit of that yellow and white mixture. I'm not really rinsing off my brush, but I'm going to take some of that yellow and white and just kind of add some highlights just to help some of those strands of seaweed to pop. So I'm just going right back over and this is going to give it kind of like a greener look. So once I have those highlights in there, I'm just rinsing off my brush and setting it off to the side because now I'm going to go in with my round brush. So the smallest brush, I get him a little bit wet and we are going to go in and add those little speckles on our turtle. So I'm using some of that dark turquoise that we mixed a little bit on there and when we add these spots you're just kind of like doing a dashed line a little bit just following around the back and then you're going to do a second row that goes in between those spaces just like so and you want to do that with all of them so i'm just kind of a little boop 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 right on the back and then i do another row where it kind of sits in between just like that and you can have your spots however you prefer. It's totally up to you. This is just kind of like a nice and simple, easy way to do it. Just a little boop, boop, boop. And sometimes it helps if you make the sound effects. Makes it a little bit easier. And you don't want to forget the top of his head. And it works pretty much the same way. Kind of work it like in a little pyramid. And you can add some other little baby speckles too. So now we have our speckles. I'm just giving my brush a nice rinse off. And you kind of want to do that in between any swapping of colors. That way the paint doesn't dry on your brushes. But we're going to go in and we are going to add in some coral now because our seaweed should be fairly dry. So for our coral, I'm going to be using red with a little bit of white. And it's okay if you have like a little orange tinted to it too. So if you have some leftover orange, you can add it in there, but it's mainly red with a little bit of white. And what we want to do is we want it to kind of fan out and it can be a little wiggly too. So I'm going to start and I'm pulling it out. And so I got one little stick and we want it to kind of split off at the end, kind of like a Y. So once you have like that main stem, you're going to start inside the line and then you're just going to pop out right at the end. And there are many species of coral out there, so you can just have fun with it. I'm just keeping it kind of nice and wiggly. It's not too wiggly, but just enough. And then you're just kind of splitting off at the end. And you can always use just a little bit more white if you need it to kind of pop a little bit more. But you want to only use a little bit of white that way it's just staying, stays really vibrant. But it will help push that seaweed back if you're having a hard time getting it to kind of cover and pop up on top. So once you kind of have one side down, then you can go ahead and put one on the other. And if you're feeling a little intimidated by painting these in, you can always practice it like on a piece of paper or on your plate or your mixing palette just before you make it permanent. And if you need to, you can always go back over certain sections if they're not popping yet for you. But once I have that in there, 
then I just give my brush a really good rinse off and then we're going to work on the purple ones. So I'm going to take red and this nice dark blue and we're going to make a nice dark purple. It's red and the dark ultramarine blue. And once I have that purple in there, see how dark it is? It's going to work fairly similar to our pink corals, except they're not going to be as wiggly and they're not going to be as thin. So I'm kind of going in with a little bit more pressure, keeping them nice and chunky. But I'm making sure that they are still fanning out from the same spot. And that one's just a little bit overlapping on my pink coral, so I'm just going to offset the left one a little bit more. That way it shows a little bit better. And then you want to give your brush a really good rinse out. And then we're going to go in with our pencil. And with our pencil, we are going to sketch in our segments. And I'm going to start by kind of sketching a border. So I'm leaving a little bit of space from the edge of my shell. And this line and if you want to decorate your shell in a different way go for it there's no wrong way to decorate your turtle shell but I'm just gonna go through this particular way so I'm just creating a nice little border and I'm sketching lightly so if you make a mistake that way it's easier to erase so I'm going to create a couple kind of flattish lines that's going to help break up the shell a little bit and create those hexagonal pieces. And I'm going to fit four. You can have more or you can have less. And from that line, I'm just going to kind of start at the top and angle it up. And then at the bottom, I angle the sides down. Then I'm going to connect these corners here with the other lines by making two lines that come to a point from each edge. And same thing on the other side. So I make two lines, they come to a point. And I'm gonna do that to connect all these lines. So two lines come to a point. And they're kind of squish hexagons. If you want them rounder, you can make them rounder. You can make them heart-shaped, you can make stars, it's up to you. And then from these points, I'm just going to draw the line so they touch my border. So I'm gonna come from this point over here, kind of connect it to the edge, connect it to the edge, and then you got some fun little segments. So once you have your segments in there, and take as much time as you need, but once you have those in there, I'm gonna be using my medium size brush to kind of paint these in. And you can choose whatever colors you prefer. You can do any of the colors we used before, or you can make up your own. So I'm gonna go in with dark purple first. So if you remember, we're gonna to mix together some red and some of this dark blue, so I get a nice dark purple. And I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna start filling in some pieces. One thing I'm going to make sure I do is I don't want the same colored pieces touching other pieces that are the same colors. That way I get a nice fun pattern. So I'm just kind of spacing it out. But if you want them touching each other or you want bigger segments that are certain colors, go for it. Remember, this is your turtle shell. You can decorate it however you prefer. But once I have these segments filled in, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this brush to my advantage to create the segments that go around the border of the shell, just by lining it up with the line for the border and pulling out to the edge of the shell. And you can have as many or as little of these stripes as you want. It's totally up to you. 
And then between colors, I'm just going to make sure I'm rinsing off my brush before I go in and mix another color. That way they always stay bright and clean. So for this color, I'm going to mix a nice pink, nice bright pink. And same thing, I'm just going to pick out, pick out some segments and fill them in. If you do happen to accidentally paint outside your lines, it's not a big deal. I highly recommend just take a second, let it dry, and you can always paint back over it. Our next color is just going to be a bright yellow. And I'm making sure that I kind of smooth down my paint, that way it just dries a little bit more quickly. And don't forget your border. I accidentally forgot to do my pink after I filled in the pink segments, but I'll be going back in to add the pink to my border shortly. And you can have this in whatever order or pattern you prefer. Just going to add in those pink guys to my border. I almost forgot about them. And then for my final color, I'm going to go in with a orange mixture. So I'm just mixing in my yellow and red just to get an orange that I'm happy with. And I'm going to fill in those remaining spaces. And remember, if you accidentally mess up a line, it's completely fine. Also, when we go back in and we add the outline to everything, it just kind of helps block everything in and it kind of masks those areas that you may have colored outside the lines. All right, so we got our shell filled in and all our designs. So now I'm gonna swap to my smallest brush, the nice little round brush, cause he is great at the little details and lines. And I'm just taking a little bit of water and I'm just going to drip some water right next to my black paint. And I'm just going to kind of mix the water and the black paint together just to thin it out a little bit. And this is going to help creating nice solid lines. That way you don't have to constantly go over them. And I'm kind of rolling my brush here. That way I get a nice little point on it. And then you can go ahead and start outlining. So for the turtle's head, I outline the entire head. And don't forget to add his little eyes up here. And once you have the eyes up here, they're just kind of like little black circles that kind of overlap the line. Then I'm going to go ahead and outline the outer shell. And I highly recommend just start where you're comfortable with. Sometimes it's easier to start on the inside of the shell versus the outside of the shell. Then 
So I have a nice outline on my shell and then I'm going to do another line across the border just to kind of separate that out. And just be careful because where you rest or anchor your hand, you just don't want to run it through any of your wet paint. So now I have the border in there and I'm just going to go around and I'm going to go along the bottom portion of the fins just to add a little accent line and it doesn't necessarily go all the way around. And I'm just kind of jumping around here, but once I have those accent lines in there, then I'm just going to go around and finish blocking in the segments of my shell. And this can help clean up any lines that you may have or any little mistakes. Just kind of hides them just a little bit. And then I'm just going to finish adding that accent line to the bottom of my flippers. So once I have those black outlines in there, then I'm going to just thin out my white paint a little bit with my clean brush. And I'm still using the small brush. And I'm gonna come in and we're gonna make some bubbles. And I try not to think about my circles too much. I just try to keep them nice and quick. And I kind of alternate between bigger bubbles and smaller bubbles. When you make some bigger bubbles, what you can do is you can add that little highlight, which is just like a little swoop. And you just kind of want to make sure you're sticking to the same side when you swoop it. So I'm swooping to the left. And you can have as many or as little bubbles as you want that can go off your canvas. I'm also just going to kind of dot in some little white dots, kind of like as little baby bubbles. But just have fun with them. You can have as many or as little as you prefer. Just adding a couple dots here and there. And by adding these bubbles with the white, it's going to allow for our black to kind of dry out a little bit before we add these highlights. But once the black lines are dry, you can add some highlights to the top of your flippers and some nice little swoops to your shell as well as to some of the segments of the shell. Don't forget to add some little white highlights to the eyes just to make them pop a little bit. But by adding this white, it just adds that little bit of shine that we need just to make it pop. Don't overthink it too much, just nice little swoops. If you do accidentally get a little bit of black on your brush while you're swooping, the best thing you can do is let it dry, make sure you clean off your brush before you continue to paint, and then go back in with a little bit more white and you can go over it. But once you have that in there, you are done and um, you have finished the turtle painting. So when you do get finished, don't forget to show it off to the world. Sharing is caring. You can tag us on Facebook or Instagram and share it. Anyway, we'll see you all next time. Don't forget to follow us for Picasso and Wine.